You guys have been clamoring for the realistic rebuilds, and finally, they are here where I use the most up-to-date rosters and records and start from the offseason rebuilding a team realistically. What does that mean? Well, that means that while there still is some flexibility to go out and sign the players I want and draft the players I want, if I see a generational player, I'm not going to do whatever it takes to move up the board and then multiple times in the top 10. We do see some crazy things happen. Of course, the Texans ended up having back-to-back -back picks after a trade-up last year. Pick second and third got CJ Stroud and Will Anderson Jr. Pretty good draft class, but I'm not going to be that crazy. I'm just going to try and realistically rebuild the team. And the first one is a challenge because these contracts get out of control fast. We are realistically rebuilding the Miami Dolphins. I wish I would have started this rebuild, you know, earlier because I unfortunately have to make a number of tough decisions, which is, first off, cutting Jerome Baker. I like Jerome Baker. He got cut in real life because the Dolphins really need cap space and they're doing whatever it takes. They're not franchise tagging Christian Wilkins, which to me makes no sense. He's one of the best interior defensive linemen in the NFL. In the prime of his career, it seems like they're just going to let him walk for nothing. Not a great start to this rebuild, and I can tell you my expectation and the reasoning behind that. I think they're about to go all in on Tua Tungabailoa. That's going to be very expensive. Certainly north of 40 mil per year on Tua. That is a lot of money to hand out to a quarterback, but if he can be an upper echelon elite tier quarterback in the Dolphins offense, you know, of course they're going to do that. But there's a lot of restructuring to do. I'll tell you, a contract like Teron Armstead, he's a great player when he's healthy. Health has always been a problem for him in his career. And with his contract, it's really, really expensive for a player that's going into his mid-30s. So, again... Some difficult choices that we're going to have to make if we're going to have this team be successful. When we look at the actual cap space, you know, the most recent rebuild I did is actually my Falcons franchise series. And the Dolphins have no money down the line. Tyree Kill, his cap hit is like 70 million somehow. <laughs> In 2026, it's 56.3. So again, we are going to have our hands full these contracts are insane. Did Emmanuel Ogba get cut? If not, I think I might just go ahead and do that as it is. He is a free agent. Well, uh, yep, makes sense to me. Penalty of 23 million, but it has to be done. The Dolphins also went out and got Jonu Smith, Davion Nixon. You know, I'm curious as to whether we're actually going to be able to get Jonu Smith in this because we you know, start with the roster. I can't load in any roster otherwise would be at week one so you can't really have the best of both worlds you can really only have one or the other but I also wouldn't expect Jonu Smith to make much of an impact I'll try to get it done but I'm not gonna go super out of my way to get it done did Xavier Howard get cut also well Xavier Howard says that a do the door is closed on a return to Miami so he's going to be done but how I what is this contract compared to what's happening in real life I mean, the Dolphins, they have an out in the contract in 2024. It's still a tremendous amount of dead cap, 23 million. Now, here in Madden, what does that mean? I guess I'll probably just try and trade him. I guess that's a possibility. And then Christian Wilkins, unfortunately, is going to have to walk. This is a tough start. Connor Williams might walk as well. But of course, the big thing with the realistic rebuilds is using the realistic draft class. You can download it from the Madden share. It is being currently updated. Uh, it is not the main most downloaded roster or draft class. It's 2024 NFL Draft Bengal is the one that's actually getting the updates. Got updated as early as today and or as, as recently as today. And it should be pretty good. Of course, doing these realistic rebuilds, I'll actually find some flaws in the draft class and I'll actually be able to fix those. So you can go ahead and download it if you want if you're on Xbox. And we'll go ahead and import the draft class, and it'll be the names you're familiar with. The problem with this draft class is it was nearly completed in terms of player player imports. And even though these faces work now, when you draft them, if you're downloading from the actual file share, I'm pretty sure it resets. There's nothing I can do about that except for restart the entire thing. 
And I can tell you, I'm not doing that. But for our purposes, it's going to be perfect. But let's get started. We have almost 24 million in available salary cap room. They're going to round up. We're going to pick up the fifth year option on Jalen Waddle. And maybe we wait. Maybe we wait and try to extend him next year. What is my 2024 cap? Jalen Phillips doesn't really want to be here. I'd like to extend both of those players, ideally. Christian Wilkins is just going to walk. That sucks. I'm just going to try to keep true to the actual Dolphins there because we know about it already. Andrew Van Ginkle. I mean, he's okay, but he's 29 years old. Only star development. I'm not going to pay Andrew Van Ginkle upwards of $13 million per year. And I have to let him walk. And of course, we're taking over from this point. There's not really much I can do about it right now. I do want to extend Robert Hunt. I'll take the money down slightly. And Robert Hunt resigns on a four-year deal. That's already pretty expensive. Texas legend Brandon Jones, hook him. I'd like to bring back. Very affordable. Very solid. We'll still be able to develop for a couple of years. That's a pretty good deal to bring Brandon Jones back. Gets as expensive at 4.45 million per year. We have three Texas legends in a row. Connor Williams, Deshaun Elliott. Of course, you guys saw Brandon Jones. Isaiah wins in here as well. A lot of actual starting caliber players in here. Now, unfortunately, I think Deshaun Elliott's going to have to walk. Connor Williams, I'd like to bring back. A two-year deal, I think, would be fine. But I'll do a three-year deal if it means he actually accepts this. And it's going to be really tight. But Connor Williams is actually able to come back. Now, are the Dolphins going to be able to do that in real life? I have my doubts. But currently, with our contracts, we can't afford to sign anybody else. So nothing's going to happen in free agency. And we just have to look forward to the next year. Our 2025 cap room, I wonder if we're going to be able to see that. Should be should be more, right? They're taking the brunt of the salary cap penalty this year. So 2025 should be more. That's my expectation. We'll find out. But where else can we save money? Tua can't do that. David Long honestly doesn't really save us all that much money. Neither does Mike White. So we're going into 2024. These are our biggest contracts. What about 2025, though? Tyree Kill goes up exponentially uh, from 2023. Huge bump to 2024. Bradley Chubb is going to end up being a bad contract for us. He's a player I'm going to have to trade. It's just going to have to happen. Xavier Howard, we know we're going to trade already. Austin Jackson, I'm not paying all this money to. So Austin Jackson could end up being a cap casualty. Going to have to replace him. A really good tackle class in the draft. That's going to be the way to do it, probably. But I just simply can't pay out what the Dolphins want me to pay out with these contracts. Like, even Zach Sealer, great player. Really, I can't pay him $10 million per year. So we're going to have to figure out a lot of these things out. But that's the fun of these realistic rebuilds is we can't be as creative with what we do. You know, I'm still going to be able to trade some of these players, but, you know, it's not going to be for first and second round picks all the time. It's going to be... And for top players, it's going to be significantly less. I'll probably operate mostly from the trade block suggestions. And I'll let Madden value these players however they would like to. As we actually jumped up to 27 mil in available salary cap. Why is that? I'm not sure. I, have, I really don't have any idea. But we did. So something must have flipped over. Or a player retired or was... No release, maybe it's updating. As for the players, we actually have a shot to get that I would want. Ace Young's actually very interesting here. Patrick Queen as well. Chase Young. Well, we cut Emmanuel Agba, right? Jalen Phillips is here. We lost Andrew Van Ginkle. Chase Young is actually extremely valuable. He's not incredibly expensive for the upside that he brings. I'd be willing to take a chance on him. Absolutely, I'd be willing to take a chance. He is certainly worth it. In the game, he has the chance, as the commanders are trying to bring him back, he has the chance to be one of the best edge rushers that you can actually find. This is someone we have to start out with, and I would be willing to overpay by Madden standards. Now, he still might go back to the commanders. Realistic possibility. But we definitely want to at least compete for his services there. AVG, going to have to pass on. I'm really only interested in players like 26 and younger. 
because we actually have a chance to develop those guys. Jerome Baker cut. I'd like to bring Jerome Baker back. I'm not going to. Sucks. And that's just one of those things that we have to deal with, unfortunately. We really just can't afford to pay Patrick Queen. Doesn't really make sense to. So I'm really going to only offer on Chase Young. And we got Chase Young. Welcome to Miami Dolphins. Big start for us. Big time, high potential edge rusher. At some point, you got to talk about, okay, when is it time to move on from potential? We know what the guy is. But Chase Young, when he was healthy, defensive rookie of the year, looked like he was coming on really strong, hasn't been able to stay healthy, and his career has really not gone anywhere up from there, unfortunately. But we have a chance to really, really develop him. Bradley Chubb, as I mentioned, is on the way out. Jalen Phillips and Chase Young will be our big-time edge rushers. Got to improve the defensive line. Getting a player like, oh, I don't know, Christian Wilkins could have been pretty good, but he's gone, and Chase Young is not his replacement. Either we change defenses, or we move Chase Young back to outside linebacker, which is likely what's going to happen. Xavier Howard, going to trade him away. We'll see what we can get back. You know, the offers are not going to be significant, like... Do I really want to trade for first-round pick Jahan Dotson from a year ago? That doesn't seem realistic to me. This is where I'm going to use kind of my, my judgment. I don't love the offers. Rondale Moore, I mean, there's something there. I think his contract's expiring, though. I'd prefer somebody else. What about Howard? I really need picks. I really need picks. I might as well just take whatever I can get. We'll take Rondale Moore. We'll get it. I mean, I don't really want that. <laughs> I don't really want it. Can I get any higher picks? Like, a third round pick in Rondell Moore for Xavier Howard. Not quite. What about no Rondell Moore? What about a pair of third round picks for Xavier Howard? I'd be happy with that return. Not quite. What about one third round pick for Xavier Howard? That's going to end up being the trade that's accepted. I'm okay with that. It's not a massive return, obviously, but we get the contract off our books and that's kind of what we're focused on for right now and as I mentioned I'm going to let Bradley Chubb go as well he is 28 years old but I just don't love the contract he's only going to get worse we're really just trying to get rid of these contracts now however no one is interested in trading Bradley Chubb what if I included a fifth round pick would that be enough to get any interest no Still might trade them. It might just come during the draft. In terms of private workouts here, I think we're hoping for a tackle. You know, if if we can get maybe a corner at some point, I would definitely consider that. But I'd like a Marius Mims to fall. Would like for him to be available. Tyler Guyton would certainly be in consideration. Jackson Powers Johnson, if he gets there, I would definitely consider as well. Now, there is actually a thought that the... Dolphins might consider a receiver. They really need to focus on the offensive line, in my opinion. But it's not like their secondary is anything special. Of course, getting Jalen Ramsey, that's amazing. Jalen Ramsey's such a great player. We all know this. However, beyond that, what do you have now? If Xavier Howard's not expected to return, Cater Kohu, Cam Smith, Eon Crossan. I mean, Cam Smith, I get it, second round pick. Somewhere in the 50s, right, if I remember. But I mean, he didn't really impress as a rookie. I like Camp Smith coming out. Little, a little handsy. Kind of remind me of J.C. Horn in that way. And also coming out of South Carolina, the comparisons he used to make. But uh, not the same level of prospect. And hasn't really been a great player up to this point. We'll try to develop him here in this rebuild. We'll see what happens. He might just have to start. Yeah, I'm actually very interested to see how this draft starts out. This is my first time really seeing it since the update in the game. The Bears at number one. What? Oh, the game thinks the Bears don't need a quarterback. They do. Caleb Williams is the number one prospect in the draft class. Why is it Malik Neighbors at number one? <laughs> oh, Commanders, please don't think you're fine with Sam Howell. It's Joe Alt. I mean, they could use a tackle. Patriots at three. Also, don't think they have a quarterback because of Mac Jones. God! What a start. The quarterbacks are staying on the board. I'll tell you, if Caleb Williams gets to me, I'll take him. 
<laughs> Olu Fashionu at number three of the Patriots, who could also use help on the O-line, no question. Cardinals go Dallas Turner. I think that's actually a possibility, especially with a trade down. The Chargers go Talisa Fuaga. Unfortunately, Fuaga has to be spelled incorrectly. Doesn't let you do Fuaga without the H, even though there's no H in his name. Giants at six. Take Marvin Harrison Jr. Every quarterback is still on the board. The Titans go Brock Bowers. The Falcons surely will take a QB here. It's Caleb Williams at number eight. The game has decided the other teams don't need a quarterback. It's devastating stuff. Bears at nine go with Byron Murphy from Texas. Kind of an underrated fit there. Jets at 10 go Troy Fatanu. They sure could use help on the O-line. Vikings go Jared Verse. Ignoring Drake May and Jaden Daniels. There goes Drake May to the Broncos. Raiders could go back-to-back -back with a quarterback. But in instead they go Cooper DeGene. Saints go with corner Terry and Arnold. What team would really take a QB here as J.C. Latham's headed to the Colts? I mean, maybe the Seahawks, Rams, Steelers would consider one in front of us. Jaden Daniels to the Seahawks. All right. The top three quarterbacks are off the board. And they were 1-2-3 in the class, by the way, and they fell all this way. Quinion Mitchell, the Jags, I could see. Marius Mims goes to the Bengals. Don't take an offensive lineman. Nate Wiggins to the Rams. I could see all that happening. Steelers. Also, no O-lineman. You go Tyler Guyton. Unfortunate. Okay. We are on the board. Round one, pick 21. Jackson Powers Johnson is here. Romo Dunze is here. Amazing how the board falls. I mean, if Romo Dunze somehow got to 21, you'd have to take him. This is kind of my conundrum. Is Romo Dunze will not be available at 21. I just I don't believe that he would be. The Dolphins could consider a receiver in this range, but is it a realistic rebuild? I know some of you are like, just take Roma Dunze. It's falling into your lap. But if I'm trying to do a realistic rebuild, and I think there's absolutely zero chance Roma Dunze gets there at 21, how can I in good conscience make that decision? In my opinion, and you're welcome to your own opinion, if you were doing your franchise, I would recommend just take a Dunze. But I, for me, personally, it ruins it. I think for that reason, I'm going to take Jackson Powers Johnson, center out of Oregon. Has guard flexibility. Gives us a big, big monster interior offensive lineman. And I can't pass on him. I know Roma Dunze is there. Brian Thomas Jr., I kind of expect to be gone by 21 as well. Adonai Mitchell could still be on the board. I have to go JPJ. Jackson Powers Johnson, welcome to Miami. Which is also a song, right? I'm not going to pretend to do it, but uh, there is a song. <laughs> and now this is the problem with the draft class. As you can see in the top left, the player model that I chose. And you can see on the right. Now, I don't know if you guys are, you know, particularly perceptive. But that's not the same guy. Top left in the, in the far right there. You could, I could understand confusion. Maybe a quick glance. They could look like twins. But actually different pictures. So that's the only downside to this class, in my opinion. But um, it is what it is. Eagles go Darius Robinson. That really feels like an Eagles pick. Graham Barton of the Texans. Scott Robinson of the Cowboys. We will simulate to our second round pick. Not going to be trading up. As the Chiefs go with Travis Kelsey replacement. Jatavion Sanders. But we will see what's available at, uh, you know, near the back end of the second round here. Troy Franklin is here. TJ Tampa. See, these are receivers that I definitely think could be on the board. Now, I might lean towards Chris Jenkins because we really need help on the interior defensive line. And the receivers are sticking on the board. And I actually don't consider receiver to be a huge need. Marshawn Nealand. Is he going to make it to my next pick? Still good guards available. Here in Amagaji, I think, would be a really good fit. Okay, so it's definitely between Marshawn Nealand and one of these defensive tackles. Great receivers on the board. TJ Tampa's there, kind of fun. 
I'm going to go... I mean, Michael Hall is electric on the inside. I'm really tempted to draft Chris Jenkins here. Really tempted. Do I prefer Marshawn Nealand? 3-4 defensive end. There's still good defensive tackles on the board. I'm going to draft Marshawn Nealand here. Perfect fit in the scheme. High motor guy. And hopefully very good. Only normal development for Marshawn Nealand, but 86 strength, 82 speed, 83 acceleration. Great agility and change of direction for him. He was one of the most agile players at the Combine at 6'3", 275, no less. Very impressive. And will be a fit on our interior defensive line. Will be a 3-4 end for us. If we move to a 4-3, he obviously has less utility for me. So we're going to certainly stick to the 3-4 as Cam Kinchins is headed to uh, the Eagles, it seemed. Back on the clock. Round three, pick four. Courtesy of Xavier Howard. And I think it'd be rude not to take a receiver here. Malachi Corley is particularly interesting because of his run after catch ability. But I'm going to double down on offensive linemen in this class and go with Kieran Amagaji from Yale. Big time, high potential guy. Really, really good athlete. Really good athlete. Still developing as a player, as a technician on the O-line. And if he gets NFL coaching... Here in Amagachi could end up being a star offensive lineman. We are drafting him. He's got prototypical NFL tackle size. 6'5", 318. Should be a very, very good fit. Will not be starting right away for us, but that's fine. Learn behind Teron Armstead. And eventually, he should be a starter for us with that hidden development. Super excited about that. As we simulate near the end of round number three. Still have not taken a receiver. They're sitting on the board. There's not really any reason for me to do so. Malachi Corley still here. Tez Walker, Xavier Leggett. Another tackle in Blake Fisher could be interesting. A corner in Jerry and Jones. Oh, man. I love the Florida State corners. I do. I really love Jerry and Jones and Renardo Green. I'm huge on. Now, did I update them enough in this class? I don't remember. What do we really need? We have 57 seconds to make a decision on this. I'm leaning towards receiver being fine. We have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. I'm not really that stressed. Now, it is a need, but I'm not super stressed about it. Tight end could be a need. Maybe Ben Sinnott. Corner. Linebacker. Okay. Kind of what we already thought about. I think I can make this decision in 30 seconds and not pause the draft here. So, let's take a look at corner. I could take any of these three in a row, even Kyrie Jackson. Linebacker. A good linebacker still available. For sure. Trevin Wallace, certainly among them. I think we actually go Trevin Wallace here. Big inside linebacker is what he's going to end up being for us out of Kentucky. 87 speed, 87 acceleration. I don't think he's 267 pounds. That might have been an input error. I think he's 240 or 237. 241. Came to the combine at 237. So, that's what I'm saying. These are errors that need to be adjusted and corrected. And uh, sometimes I miss them. So, Trevin Wallace will be adjusted both in the class and in this video. Not to worry as Jeremiah Trotter goes next pick. I wanted a higher upside guy. Trotter's a great player. But Trevin Wallace, a little bit of a better athlete. And I thought he'd be a good fit for us. We need to replace Jerome Baker. Trevin Wallace is going to be that guy that we go for. Base cam might have lagged, but I said that Trevin Wallace is going to be the guy that we will go for. And Jerrion Jones is still on the board in the, in the fifth round. It's a no-brainer for me at this point. Welcome to Miami. Good speed and acceleration. I'm a big Jerrion Jones guy. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if he ended up with star development at some point in this in this uh, draft class. But Jerry and Jones, big time corner, bring him back. Revan Span Ford goes to the Eagles. We are back on the clock. Ricky Pearsall still available. A bunch of great receivers are still available. Like they're just sitting on the board and it's such a stacked receiver class, I could see that happening. It's a possibility. It goes one of two ways, right? They either all fly off the board or some of them last because there are a bunch of really good ones. And what is the best complement to this offense is 
is tough to say. I mean, you have different, you know, styles of receiver here. Tess Walker is an outside deep threat. Xavier Leggett is amazing after the catch and also burn down the field, but amazing after the catch. Ricky Pearsall's kind of like your jack of all trades, but tested really well, really good athlete, really great hands. Jermaine Burton, technician of a route runner, good athlete as well. Um, I mean, you could flip a coin. I'll tell you what, we're going to keep Ricky Pearsall in the state of Florida. Welcome to the Dolphins. Should be a good third receiver for us. Obviously, I think the guy on the right is how Ricky Pearsall views himself when he looks in the mirror, but top left is kind of what we all see. But maybe somewhere in the middle. Ricky Pearsall, what am I even talking about? Ricky Pearsall, welcome to the Dolphins. Good pickup for us there. As uh, I think we're having a pretty nice draft for the most part. Got a linebacker, got a receiver, upgraded the O-line. Great receiver still on the board. Upgraded at corner. Still might not be done. I mean, the receivers that are still available are just amazing. So many awesome options. It's really tough to choose. I could just take another receiver and not really worry about it for the next for the rest of the rebuild. And that is, I think, what direction we're gonna go in. Let's go with Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Tez Walker is a great player. People are down on him because he dropped the ball out at the senior bowl. It's obviously not what you want to see, but the tape's really good. He could end up being a really, really good player. But I'm gonna take Xavier Leggett. Big time speed. Really, really good all-around athlete. And good fourth receiver onto the team. And I think I might want to take another corner as well. Still good corners, just sitting out here. And I think I might lean towards the best remaining one on the board. That's Cam Hart from Notre Dame. Big-bodied corner, physical. Had a good showing at the Senior Bowl as well. Now we'll be joining our defensive backfield. That is the draft. Not a lot of hidden development. But what I'll tell you about my draft class is there is not a whole ton of hidden development. I know that's a little bit boring. There are still some great players and gems you can find, but it's not like overloaded. I wanted to try and keep things a little bit realistic. And uh, the ratings are already like significant, especially for the receivers and that here. Jackson Powers Johnson is a 76 overall. I'm probably going to move him to guard straight away. His left guard's a big need, and I know he can do that. He's 6'4", 321 pounds. And uh, I guess I could change his image as well. I mean, it's super frustrating that this is a thing. Again, doesn't really change much for our purposes with the rebuild. But, you know, it just it does kind of hurt the immersion a little bit. But that is now a little bit of a better look at Jackson Powers Johnson. Marshawn Nealon's a 73. Kieran Amagaji is a 70. Trevin Wallace is 72. Again, need to change his weight. 267. I don't know how that possibly could have happened. The only thing I can expect is that when changing it quickly, it tends to shoot up a ton. So I think that could have been what happened. Like you can see it's just, it's, it went to 186 in a second. Uh, so we're going to make that adjustment. Uh, Trevin Wallace is going to play inside linebacker for us. It was an interesting draft. Definitely, you know, things to look forward to. But uh, overall, you know, nothing crazy. Just some some solid players. And then obviously, two big time steals at receiver. See if we can get those guys on the field. And Trevin Wall is also very not 6'5", by the way. I don't know how I didn't catch that the first time. I, I just saw it just now. So, going to make that adjustment. He's only 6'1", I think. Yeah, he's 6'1". I, again, I don't know how that went through the cracks the first time. If you're using this draft class, you're probably only using it for rebuilds anyway, so it really won't matter, but it's been fixed and adjusted. We still need an upgrade at defensive tackle, and there's not really one coming right now. Now, it's not like, oh, you had the opportunity to do that in the draft and you chose otherwise. We just couldn't do both at the time. We decided to get Marshawn Nealand instead. I still think that was the right call. We might be able to swap Bradley Chubb for a defensive tackle. That's a possibility. But look how expensive this contract gets. This contract gets. I mean, the penalty is insane for moving him right now. We just have to hold on. We're going to have to hold on to him until 2025. I have to wait another year. Kind of locked in on that. And obviously, it's not great. Chase Young will be starting over him at right outside linebacker. And he will be the rush end. Chubb, he'll rotate in. That's fine. We need to make more money. 
our salary cap space is ultimately, basically, non-existent. And we have to extend to a tongue of Iloa. There will be casualties. You might be looking at one of them. Ooh, Teron Armstead wants to develop Jackson Powers Johnson. I actually would have been more in favor of developing Kieran Amagaji, who plays at your same position behind you. But, all right. I mean, Jackson Powers Johnson is going to start at left guard for us this season. So, I'm not actually mad about it. I just, you know, he's certainly more developed than Amagaji is. And I do want Kieran Amagaji to end up being a starter for us. It's just not going to happen this season. And maybe Teron Armstead is somebody that we don't get rid of. Just trying to figure out ways to make cap space. I don't know how we're going to extend to a tongue of Iloa. That's going to be extremely difficult. So I'm not I'm not really sure you know, what we're going to do. We'll figure it out. You'll see. And then that last draft class should be compatible with C4's 2025. We're going to try that out today. I do like to use the non-realistic classes because there's more variation there and you know you don't know anything about the players and it's kind of actually have to do the scouting and figure out about these guys and take chances but you know if we download this class we know travis hunter is going to be pretty good for example so I, I do like it i do like the idea but at the same time you know there are some things that you know, I, I don't love about the idea and obviously, there have been some transfers as well. Ethan Burke's not going to go top 10. I would highly doubt it. Roger Rosengarten is in this draft class. I think I have to add him into my class if I don't have him already. But uh, we'll we'll try it out. See what's going on. And I would expect... I think Shadur Sanders is the early favorite to be the number one overall pick. I like seeing my guy Quinn Ewers in there. And he also has included underclassmen who are not draft eligible. Just because he thinks it's more fun. Which, you know, you can't argue with that. You know, it definitely is more fun to see Arch Manning in there, but he's not eligible next year, so it's kind of tough. But we'll try it out. As I said, we'll try it out. Grayson Murphy also is in this draft class in 2024. So it's not perfect. I, I kind of wish I could reset it, to be honest. But uh, it's loaded in. We're going to rock with it. See what happens. You guys should be familiar with the team at this point. Extending Tua is going to be a problem. Haven't figured out how we're going to solve that problem yet. But right now, it is all about development. All about development. So, Trevin Wallace will start. Forgot about Channing Tindall. Channing Tindall's a player. That's right. I don't even have any money to go out and sign a nose tackle. So, we're just kind of stuck with what we have. And that's okay. Simulate to the midseason mark. See how this team's doing. And then, you know, I eventually consider making a move. I don't know how competitive we're going to be. I don't remember how good Dolphins playbooks are. Well, the Dolphins playbooks seem to be pretty good. Four and two at the midseason mark. Number eight offense. Number 19 defense could certainly improve. We do have a breakout defensive lineman. Is it Marshawn Nealand? It is. Okay, well, if you have a big game, I would be super excited about that. And getting him up to star dev would be awesome. Coming off of a loss against Tennessee in week seven. The national focus scouting position is going to be, well, we're not going to be able to get in play for Travis Hunter, probably. But that would be nice. He is one of the top players in the draft. Although Will Johnson might be the actual best true corner out of Michigan. Definitely a name to watch. I would not ex or not be surprised if he were the uh, first corner off the board next year, even over Travis Hunter. Who knows what's going to happen with him. Great player. Is he a hybrid receiver corner? Or will he have to choose at the next level? That's going to be a very interesting conversation. What I will say is, you know, when you're in college, you can't play 100% if you're going to play every snap at wide receiver and corner. Right? You can't be 100% every snap. It's just, it's too much to go at full speed all the time. Right? But at college, in college, at the college level, 80% of Travis Hunter is still the best player on the field pretty much on either side of the ball, right? In the NFL, it might not be the case. You need to be 100% of your best. And if that's him just playing one position, that's probably what it's going to end up being. So we'll see what happens there. I think it'd be really cool if he played both. But I think what his role probably ends up being is primary corner. Maybe gets a few snaps at receiver every now and again. 
Maybe it's a couple times a game. Maybe it's a couple times every other game. Maybe it's a couple times a season. Maybe it's even more than that. I'm not sure. But I think he's going to end up having to choose. 43 million in 2025 cap room. Tua Tungavailoa is asking for a lot of money. We can't even offer him what he wants. Here's what we're going to do is we are going to try and extend. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is a nightmare. We're going to bring back Jalen Waddell and Jalen Phillips. Hopefully Javon Holland as well, but it's going to be tough at that point. And then franchise tag Tua. This is a nightmare. I mean, oh man, we have no money. This is really a devastating spot. Jalen Waddell, five-year extension. I'd love to take the money down slightly. Give me a little bit more wiggle room. Okay, Jalen Waddell's back long-term. That's a huge start. Jalen Phillips does not want to be here. Wants to be out in California. Jalen Phillips, I'd really love if you'd reconsider. And it, it, it's interesting to me that a guy that chose to transfer from UCLA to Miami doesn't like the idea of staying in Miami. Now, I get that he had to transfer to Miami because he's not medically cleared to play at UCLA. But he also did choose to go to Miami. Why does he not want to be in Miami all of a sudden? Killing me. Jalen Phillips wants a little bit more money. I can't bring back everybody. I need to create some space. Javon Holland wants more money. And this is the trade deadline. I mean, if I'm going to free up more space for 2025, something has to happen now. I think what I'm going to end up doing, we can't do anything about Bradley Chubb right now, really. I think I'm going to restructure some contracts when we get to the offseason and then maybe get the wiggle room there. Right now, we are in a very, very tough spot. Something's going to have to give. See what it ends up being. But we did make the playoffs. 11 and 6 in 2024. So things are going very well, I would say. When you look at the numbers, Tua Tunga of Iloa has an amazing year. About 4,000 yards passing, 39 touchdowns, and just 8 interceptions, passing for over 230 yards per game. Rushing attack, pretty good. Devon Achan is developing. Only 22 years old, up to an 86 overall already. This is somebody we absolutely need to keep around. One of the fastest players in the NFL. You could argue for more than 97 speed, to be honest. Electric speed. Receiving Tyreek Hill, amazing. Cedric Wilson, wide receiver three, slot receiver, I guess really produces in this offense because he outproduced Jalen Waddle, one of the best overall deep threats in the league, potential-wise, is back to just catching screens. 11 and a half yards per catch. Insane for a player like Jalen Waddle. But I don't think actually too far from what he had a couple of years ago. It's so crazy, and it goes to show you just, you know, what a role in an offense can do. 2021, Jalen Waddle averages 9.8 yards to catch. He is only catching screens and short passes, catches 104 passes. I think that's the rookie record. Under 10 yards to catch, looking like Jarvis Landry. 2022, the offense changes. Jalen Waddell on 75 catches goes for over 1,350 yards. A league leading 18.1 yards per catch. Now it's down to 14.1 after 2023. But it just goes to show you. Situation is everything. Cedric Wilson's not going to do that again. I'm going to move Jalen Waddle. David Long has 134 tackles, three loss or low. Marshawn Nealand has 11. Seven and a half sacks, or 11 TFLs, seven and a half sacks. Nealand, I didn't check to see if he got the breakout. It means he couldn't have got it because I didn't give him the opportunity to. I think he had some type of breakout, but I, I forgot to follow through with it after the uh, trade deadline. Unfortunately, but a very solid rookie season. This was a great year. Winning 11 games, you're never mad about. Chase Young, I wish, was a little bit more productive. I think there's certainly something to be said about the, the scheme that we're in. Might make a change or two in the offseason. You guys will be the first to know. Absolutely. Trevin Wallace. Just do field general. And... Would have loved for him to get star dev. I don't know if he's going to win defensive rookie of the year. I kind of doubt it. It's a possibility, but I doubt it. We'll see. But getting star dev for him would be awesome. And we'll see if we can knock out the Bengals. Wild card round of the playoffs. The Bengals are a very good team. 
We'll see what happens. And we are headed home early. A 26 to 14 loss. I'll tell you, if we can't beat the Bengals in the first round, the Kings of the first round exit, well, I don't know if that especially bodes well for us. We're headed to the offseason and we have a lot to do financially. I really gave myself a tough one with this first realistic rebuild. And I've been pretty realistic so far as the 49ers seem to get playoff revenge on the Chiefs with a 35-21 victory in Super Bowl 59. Show me a dolphin in here somewhere. Nope. Leatu Latu to the Panthers. Caleb Williams, of course, rookie of the year with the Falcons. Now, Caleb Williams ending up on the Falcons, I don't think is absolutely out of the question. I'd give it like maybe a 5% chance of happening, maybe less. But it's not absolutely out of the question. I just think the Bears stick and pick and go with him at number one. But you never know for sure. But you kind of do. But uh, of course, the Falcons would have to move up and it would probably cost quite a lot to do that to move all the way up to number one. But uh, yeah, he certainly probably the front runner for Offensive Rookie of the Year right now. You'd expect He's going to go number one overall. Bears should probably get him some weapons. You got DJ Moore in there. See if they add a big-time receiver. Maybe Roma Dunze. Maybe Brian Thomas Jr. I don't know. We will certainly find out, but that is not a discussion for right now. If you're interested in draft talk, check out the mock drafts. Check out some of the other draft videos on the channel. I'm very happy to talk about that for hours, but not in this video. Focusing more on rebuilding the Dolphins. I think we did a decent job with the first draft class, but got a lot of players to resign right now. $25 million in cap room. Tua has gone up to superstar X-Factor. Again, I need to franchise tag him and just wait for some of these contracts to get cheaper that I have with Bradley Chubb and Teron Armstead. Just give me a little bit of wiggle room. Right now, there's none. David Long's going to have to walk. I have $25 million in cap room. And honestly... Jalen Phillips might have to walk. And that's very, very tough. But can I really give him about like 30 mil per year on average? That's a lot. That's a lot to give Jalen Phillips. I really would like to keep him around, but I just, I can't do it at this price tag. It's just out of control high. But I can't trade him either. This is the best I can do. Jalen Phillips will be playing on a new team. I mean, the writing was on the wall with that one, unfortunately. You hate to see it, but it had to be done. Now, Javon Holland, I do expect to be back. He is expensive, but he's one of the better safeties in the league. And now we're going to be able to actually probably bring back David Long Jr. as well. For another year, at least. That's a possibility. So we'll, uh, we'll try to offer him a two-year contract. Seven mil per year. He's going to test free agency. I'm okay with that. We will franchise tag Tua Tonga Vailoa at some point here. Come on. And we will franchise tag Tua. It's 54 million for one year. We dive super negative into the cap room. Obviously, you'd be able to work around that more in real life. And we're going to work to work around it here. But uh, there's certain things in Madden where you're just completely limited. I think some people are going to think that's unrealistic. You can do that. Just in real life, you obviously have a lot more flexibility with how you work around the cap. And I will work to get out of this negative hole. And that's, you know, next on the schedule. How much money do we save by cutting or trading Bradley Chubb at this point? Let's see. I mean, Jalen Ramsey, we'd save money by doing, by cutting him. But I'm not going to do that. I forgot about Eric as a camera. He's a good player. As, as a comma. Emma? I can't remember. There's still a monster penalty for cutting Bradley Chubb. We just have to deal. This is a bad contract. I don't think it's going to age particularly well in real life either. He's just not a top flight pass rusher. He's definitely at least in the next tier below. And he's getting paid like he's one of the best in the league. And he's just not quite at that level. Couldn't do anything in free agency, obviously, with our cap situation. Again, working to get out of that. Here we are at number 22. Very familiar area. Was that... Number 21, here before. Now the Steelers are picking at number one. Let's see how this goes. Ruben Bain, defensive end out of Miami, is the first pick. Now, I didn't... Ethan Burke at number two. I didn't see the big-time Tennessee pass rusher. But here he is. James Pierce Jr. is a stud. James Pierce is a monster. Now, this, this draft is going to be really, really interesting. I'm not even sure what we would do 
at 22. We're going to find out. Harold Perkins goes to the Commanders. I think he's going to be playing off-ball linebacker for LSU in 2024. It's his best, uh, best path to success in the NFL. He's just not big enough to be an edge. But we will simulate to our pick. Malachi Starks, another really good player. There goes Ant Hill. He's also not going to be draft eligible next year. Only be a sophomore. But, yeah, and I think I just wanted to test this class. Jadur Sanders falls and goes to Rams. And here we are. What do we do? Not going to take a quarterback. Joni Vaki's in 2024. He's got to make some adjustments to the players in the 2024 class. Caleb Downs is here. He is also not going to be draft eligible next year, but is a stud. Von Solomon is in this draft in 2024. I do not know what to take here. A lot of running backs. Obviously, don't need any of those. I'm going to go James Pierce just because I know he's a stud in real life. Hopefully, he's quite good in the game. We'll find out. Does have hidden development. We needed to replace Jalen Phillips. I still am not trusting Bradley Chubb long term. Pierce will have a year of development. And it, I mean, hopefully ends up being a stud for us. James Pierce is a freak. Is he draft eligible? I think he is. I think he was a sophomore this past year. Let's find out. Yes, he was a sophomore. Put up nine and a half sacks in 2023. Really good player. It'll be fun to see his development. Sonny Styles, a great player too. There's so many really, really good players in this draft class. Evan Stewart's another one. Transferred to Oregon at the transfer portal. And teaming up with Dylan Gabriel at Oregon should be a very fun combination. There's Jabbar Muhammad, who chose to transfer, I think, also to Oregon over Texas. Unfortunate, but could use a corner. No. At this point, we're just kind of taking a chance. Tedaroa McMillan, big-time player for Arizona. What do we need? We could potentially go with an offensive lineman. Could go with a tackle. Any good tackles available? Riley Mallman cannot run block, but it has great pass protection ability. Micah Pettis seems to be more of a jack-of-all-trades type of player. Some good defensive tackles here. Bear Alexander, transfer from Georgia to USC. Nash Huttmacher is not a player I know. Did I? Looks disgusting. Did not watch a ton of Nebraska football in 2023. Let's take a chance. Has Hidden Dev 95 strength? Am I behind the board on Nash Huttmacher? I gotta look into that. There he is in all his beauty. Got a mean sunburn going on in that picture. That is our newest draft pick. Junior defensive tackle for the Huskers out of Wacoma, South Dakota. O-A-C-O-M-A. -O -O Not quite sure how to pronounce that. It actually, it seems like Mexican, like Aztec almost. Reminds me of Oaxaca, but I, I'm, that pronounced Wacoma? Like glaucoma? I have no idea. Not particularly relevant. Moving on. If any of you are from that town in South Dakota, you let me know. Now, the percentage on that's not going to be particularly high. Now I have to check. I mean, I'm going to guess I'm going to guess fewer than 10,000. Population is 401. That's it. 401. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is an unbelievable population. I'm from a, a pretty small town. It's a, a you know a few or several thousand. 401 is wild. Insane. Okay, I can't even get over that. I can't. I don't even know what to take here. We need more help on the D line. How about Bear Alexander, former top recruit to Georgia, and is now a member of the Miami Dolphins. Apparently, has an effort problem. Nicholas Harbor's in this class. There's my tight end. You guys don't know about Nicholas Harbor. He or three. Now, okay, so he does run track. I know. I know this is gonna seem like complete football degenerate. I've seen him run track before, not not personally, but I've seen video of it, which maybe is worse. Maybe is worse. He was like 6'5", 230 pounds out there, maybe even in the two twenties at the time as a recruit and ran like a 10-7 or something in the 100 meter, which would be wildly fast, especially at that size. I'm going to draft him. This is a major steal. 96 speed, 97 acceleration. He's going to be playing receiver for South Carolina, but 
I'm moving him back to tight end. My fault. He's actually got down to 10-2 in the 100 meter. 10-2-2 seems to be his personal best. It, it's utterly insane if you don't know anything about track. Yeah, and he did that at 225 pounds. So, he's going to be a name to know. Am I upset that that's how Nicholas is spelled? And it, you don't even know the last part of it either. It's it's N-Y-C-K-O-L-E-S. I mean, they each their own, but it's unusual. Devin Neal's a pretty sick running back out of Kansas. It was Katron Allen out of Penn State. I mean, Andrew L. Anthony. I see all the OU receivers. Uh, Jaleel Farouk. Elijah Huzzy, I don't know. That's a fun name. Dude, Ollie Gordon. Jaden Ott. Steals down the board. These are great running backs. Texas, future Texas legend Isaiah Bond. Hook him. Day three. I just need running back depth. I'll go Katron Allen. Welcome to the team. And let the CPU handle the rest. James Pierce got a 74 overall. Nash Hutmacher is a 73. It's a Hall of Fame name already. And maybe I'm pronouncing it too much like it's European. But it's uh, Hutmacher, it's gotta be, right? Bear Alexander in the third is a 71 overall. 73 for Nicholas Harbour. Again, I'm moving him to tight end. Uh, nothing particularly impressive down the board, except for another Texas legend, Andre Carrick. He played like the hybrid offensive tackle tight end position at Texas. <laughs> kind of a niche call there, but I know my Texas football. Get your horns up. Hook him. Nick Harbour goes up to 78 overall tight end. I think I found my starting tight end. This will be the last time I use this class, probably. Until it gets cleaned up maybe a bit more. But, I mean, that's pretty unbelievable. Got to be one of the highest overall players in the entire class. Let's see what some of these guys are. 81 overall for Luther Burden. I can get on board with that. He's phenomenal. Maybe a bit high, but he's phenomenal. Travis Hunter at 81 overall. It's to the Texans. Wow, what a fun team. Malachi Starks is 79, as is Will Johnson. 78 for Harold Perkins and now Nicholas Harbour. Ruben Baines is 77. Okay, so this is the team. I mean, getting Nicholas Harbour is a huge boost for us. Jalen Waddle going to slide into the slot. And pause. We need another middle linebacker that isn't Channing Tindall. And I need to move the defensive line around. James Pierce is going to play outside linebacker. Do I start him over Bradley Chubb? Not yet, but that will be the ultimate goal. Get him into a starting position. We'll, uh, we'll play him at left outside linebacker for now. Oh, we just got a dev trade upgrade. I think it was Jerry and Jones is now going to be a star dev player. Yeah, Jerry and Jones. Such a big upgrade. Even the cat wanted to get involved. You guys might have heard a uh, cat there. Good stuff as always. Try to get Brandon Jones superstar dev, although we know that's not going to happen. Imagine two upgrades in the same training camp. It's just not, it's not feasible. You can barely get one, you know, every so often. Two. I've never seen it. All right, this is the team. Got Jalen Waddle in the slot this year, so he should be getting a lot more production than he had in the previous year. And Jerry and Jones will play in the slot. Uh, corner. Linebacker still weak. Interior defensive line isn't great. But the team overall is pretty good. Won 11 games last year. I'm expecting for, you know, something similar this year. We got better overall. And we lose to the Falcons week one. We're not making the playoffs. It's over. Ooh, one and five at the midseason mark. That's not good. Defense is terrible. And our offense is actually not really that good either. Okay, 22 million in 2026 cap space. Really just two big free agents. Jalen Ramsey is going to be 30 million. Or 20 million. That's... that's... I don't know why I thought... I, 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 when I said 30, I meant like 27. 28. 29. But... 22 and a half is not so bad. Tua, on the other hand, is still 50 million per year. If we franchise tag him, which will it let me do it back to back years? You can in real life. The price just goes up. The game, I wonder if you can. It's something I don't know about because I've never even attempted it to my, my recollection. Kyrie Kill's cap hit is nearing 62 and a half million. It is a nightmare scenario. That's too much money, I would say. 
I can finally get rid of Bradley Chubb and actually clear some money. Penalty is still crazy, but it would free up some money. It's a disaster situation, as I've said. Bradley Chubb has to go. And I can't even trade Bradley Chubb because I'm so negative in cap space. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to restructure Tyreek Hill. That makes his cap, cap hit only 30 million, only in 2025, 72.8 million in 2026. Utterly absurd, but gives me a little bit more flexibility for next season. Now, I'd like to do a little bit more restructuring. Does Jalen Waddle clear money? It does. And it's really not like too many. Uh, too many changes down the line to his contract that they you know really kills us cap wise i think it's certainly worth it you could do the same with javon holland we're going to have to and then i'm almost able to trade bradley chubb i'd take anything i can get a second third round pick i'd be more than happy with more than happy but i just need to get like sub 18 million before i can do that i'll restructure chase young as well it was going to be a tough bring back, to be honest. I don't know what this quarterback class is looking like. I know two is going to get extended in real life. We had to franchise tag him first. But I'm going to try and make a trade. Bradley Chubb can finally leave. Get me a pick back. I would appreciate it. He's one of our better players still, but I just don't want him here. All right. Who wants him? Same offers as before. I think I was trying to make a trade happen with the Jets who were interested Give me your second round pick for Bradley Chubb, please. Bang. Bradley Chubb headed to the Jets. It just doesn't make sense for us to pay him. We need to clear cap space really badly. We're finally back with our head above water. We're going to take a penalty for it at some point. But for right now, gives us a little bit of space. We really still can't afford to offer Tua. Our 2026 cap room is just 15 mil. So bringing back Jalen Ramsey is going to be tough. Again, going to be some wiggle room. I will probably try and extend Ramsey and then franchise tag two again. That's going to be our best bet. But right now, there's still really not much we can do. It's just so tough. And you see teams go through this as well. The Dolphins are going through it real life or in real life right now. In order to pay your quarterback, you have to make tremendous sacrifices to the rest of the roster, which is why... A lot of team Super Bowl windows are year three or four of that rookie quarterback or like of, of their drafted quarterback. Fifth year even if they were a first rounder. So that's kind of the window to make the team as stacked as possible because when you have to pay that QB, you can't afford to pay everybody else. We ended up bouncing back, but not enough to make the playoffs. Finishing at nine and eight, the Patriots are 13 and four. Okay, well... I think we finished strong, for sure. Tua only 25 touchdowns, only four picks, though. Didn't really find the end zone that often, and that's partly because Devon A-Chain had 12 touchdowns, and it's also because we didn't really score that many points. I think that's kind of what that comes down to a little bit. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell were both very productive. Nicholas Harbour had a very solid rookie year. Ricky Pearsall was that third contributor. And then on defense... A lot of TFLs for the boys. Zach Sealer at nine sacks, seven for Chase Young. Still not really getting a ton of pressure. Not really forcing that many turnovers either. But our second half was better. Definitely better than the first half. Just uh, still in a kind of a weird transition period. Won 11 games and just to kind of come crashing back down to earth. That's brutal. And it's not like our, our money situation is that much better. This is tough. The Chiefs beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl 31-21. Joe Burrow wins MVP. No Dolphins in there for any award, unfortunately. But the former Dallas Texans beat the current Dallas Cowboys. And we are headed to the offseason. It's, it's definitely, like, you know, unfortunate to see how things have gone. I'm trying to figure out ways around this, but, you know, within the kind of scope of what I want to do realistically here... We are somewhat limited in what we can do. Some people might already be annoyed that I traded Bradley Chubb. You're going to have to deal with that. I think he was traded for a first-round pick. 
plus something. Maybe it was just a first round pick in real life from the Broncos. Getting a second round pick for him, I think, is, is fair. But uh, it's, it's going to be really tough to extend these guys. 3.7 million in 2026 cap room. We are going to have to move some money around. We're bearing the penalty of the Bradley Chubb trade. And we have to deal with it. Is there anything else we can do? Tyree Kills cap hit 72 million. It's just so wild. I wish I could extend him early to make his cap hit like less than half of this, but it's not an option right now. It should be an option. Hey, can I renegotiate? Early extend. Be sweet. Can't do it. I'm going to add more money to Jalen Waddle in the future, freeing up some more money now. Also going to restructure Javon Holland again. Ron Armstead going into the final year of his deal. It's really at this point just Tyree Kill that's killing us. A $72.8 million cap hit is the highest number I think I've ever seen in Madden. He's not even a quarterback. So he's killing us. I need to free up a little bit more money to even offer Jalen Ramsey. And then franchise tag too. I just need a little bit more. So what we're going to do is cut players that don't need to be here. There are a ton of players on the roster. Look how many running backs we have. All of these guys are getting cut. Also, I'm good. I'm just going to cut Jason Sanders and draft the kicker. We save money by doing that. Free four million. He's replaceable. There's going to be a kicker in free agency, but I'm going to have to draft one because my money situation is not going to be great. We freed up twenty seven million by gutting the roster. That lets us offer on Jalen Ramsey, who I'd like to keep around. Jalen Ramsey's back for three seasons. And then Tua, I'm going to try and franchise tag again. If not, we will have to draft a quarterback. But this was never going to be somebody I would I would have traded. So we're going to franchise tag Tua and keep on rocking. Okay, we pick at number 17 in the draft. I don't think I'm going to trade up. Didn't see anyone particularly crazy to move up for. There is a defensive tackle that I like the look of. Let's see what we can do here. So there is a quarterback that's actually available. But I don't think I'm going to go in that direction. And again, I'm, I'm not being unrealistic with the franchise tagging. I think some people are going to be upset about that. I'm I'm doing it in the moment and then fixing it before we get into the next action. And with Tyree Kill, I'm going to be able to fix it very, very soon. So, yeah, I really don't think that's cheating at all. But here at number 17, the defensive tackle I was targeting is actually gone, unfortunately. Where do we pivot? This center is 6'5", 3'10". Doesn't look like your typical center at that size. But that, I mean, he just really looks like the best player available. And we still could use help on the offensive line. This gives us a little bit of flexibility to maybe move Connor Williams or Robert Hunt long term. I didn't come into this draft planning on taking a center. But I'm just looking at the, you know, other players available. Maybe Cordell Anderson... Got A to B man coverage, B zone. Does have elite speed as well. I'm actually going to pivot here. I'm going to go with the corner. Cordell Anderson out of Clemson. Only normal development, but I think did end up looking like the best player on the board. And corner was a position that we could certainly look to improve. So that ends up being the move there. Could consider a safety. This receiver looks quite good. I mean, deep route running isn't great. But he looks awesome. We just don't really need a receiver is my main problem with that. Deion Hewitt also looks amazing. We just get another defense or another defensive back in the mix. Deion Hewitt, great speed. He was also the fastest corner. Did the other one not say first at 431? Fun bug as always. Deion Hewitt, also normal development. Fun stuff as always. The problem is. Just based on this draft class, I didn't really improve in spots that I wanted to. We upgraded at corner. I mean, this safety looks like a linebacker, pretty much. But I'm going to draft a receiver. Darius Moore, physical archetype, very different than what we have right now. 6'4", 235. Very good athlete. And the skills look to be quite good. He should be a beast. And he's finally a hidden development player for our team. Very well-rounded. And I don't know what his role is going to be. 
but sometimes you just have to draft best player available and then figure out the rest. It gives us flexibility, which is important, but we need to hit on this next one as well. And it's going to be tough down the board. I need linebacker. Tell me there are some good linebackers that are here. Denard Meekins actually looks awesome at first glance. And that may end up being the pick. I would say so. Denard Meekins out of the U. We get to keep him local. 6'3", 241. Block shedding could be good. It could be terrible, honestly. A pursuit, A tackle. Elite speed. He's going to be a great player. Only normal development. But based on his athleticism and what it looked like his core attributes were going to be, this could be a starter right away, which I guess isn't saying much for us at linebacker. But he looks very good. Just drafting, you know, no hidden development players. Fun as always. AC Kane, name of a Texas receiver. Did he hit the transfer portal? Certainly could have happened. I claim to be an expert on Texas football moments ago. But now I don't remember if Casey Kane hit the portal or not. I'm sure he's at Sam Houston State or something. Or UNLV, maybe. Casey Kane, UNLV Rebels commit. All right. I got to it in the end. I remembered. Not that it matters, but um, what do we do here? Linebacker still a need. I do need more depth at running back, to be honest. How about an elusive back with B catching? That's interesting. Take another running back. Draft recap, we got a 78 overall corner, a 77 overall corner, a 75 overall receiver, and a 75 overall outside linebacker. Those are very, very highly rated players. It's just that most of them do not have a good development trade. Okay, there was a disgusting guard, Michael Banyard, that went in the second round, 83 overall. Monster running back at 80 overall. Then we got the... We got a top five player in the draft overall wise in Cordell Anderson. We got the next highest in Deion Hewitt. Only 277 overalls in the entire class. Where was the center I almost drafted? Because that was very, very close to reality. Was it Maurice Thomas, 75 overall? That'd still be good, but I'm still trying to figure out how the pieces of the, of the puzzle fit with this team. The offense looks very good. I don't think there's any way around this. Is this Eric Church? Ah, Enrique Church, not the country singer. Damn shame. But Moore is a great addition to our squad. I think I'm just going to make him receiver three as a star or better dev, but star dev probably. And then defensively, Warner definitely got upgraded, but the dev traits have not. The D-line is still where we need work, and linebacker doesn't actually look too bad. We got James Pierce in the mix now. This could be a sneaky good team. We got to nine wins last season after a one in five start. Great bounce back. But if we just can start hot this time around, we're going to be an easy playoff team. This could very easily be a Super Bowl caliber team. Would not shock me at all. We just need to develop. And more depth would be nice, but we don't really have the money for that. So... If we can just change this Tyreek Hill contract, we're going to be in business. And also, getting Devon Achan up to a 90 overall, for some reason in Madden, 90 overall plus running backs just perform way better than anything below. I don't know if there's some type of threshold there with the sim engine, but I notice it all the time. We're going to go from four yards per carry with Achan to maybe even a yard per carry higher, year five this year. Like, that's probably what's going to happen. It's just insane. I could even manage to get gold in this drill. A-chan not really making anybody miss. And this drill is all about speed, getting to the end zone as quickly as possible. You don't really want to juke. You don't want to spin. Don't want to celebrate. The only thing you can really do is a celebration dive for a small bonus at the end. But it's all about speed. And we already got tackled too many times. And the fullback chooses to never block anybody. And some of the jukes just don't work. So it's dead already. But sometimes the game likes to call runs that are just bad. This is one of the good ones. Anyone that actually, and I, I screwed it up, that's on me. But anyone where your fullback will actually block, it should be pretty much a guaranteed touchdown. But I'm I'm continuing to go the wrong way. <laughs> I, I don't know how I can't make this cut. This is another one of the good ones. It's just, uh, this drill never gives me any trouble. But of course, as soon as I get on, my, on the mic here, start talking. I hate this one. 
Can't even find the end zone. But HN has the speed. We're in there. But we are gonna uh, are gonna get gold here. I do love the halfback dive with a back like HN because you typically can hit you know through the hole there and score pretty easily. Didn't happen that time, but we already got gold, so it's no big deal. This is our kicker, by the way. Nathaniel Vakos. Do not like how Nathaniel spelled with an A-L at the end. But he's got 90 kick power, 82 kick accuracy. He's a leader, personality-wise. That's always great. Okay, so this is going to be the team. Again, the offense hasn't really been changed very much, but it looks very good. And then defensively, and we haven't got Kieran Amagaji in there. 73 overall. I've just kept her on Armstead. Final year of his deal. It's really tough to develop offensive linemen in this game. There are no offensive linemen drills. You can't make him a focus player. It's pretty stupid in my opinion. The defense is not exceptional, but it's good. It is good. Linebacker is good. The D-line is good. I would say that the secondary is like borderline great, but we need one of these rookies to really come on strong and with only normal development, it's going to be tough to get really high up there. Michael Pilardi in there at punter. Specialist-wise, I am probably going to move Jalen Waddle back to the slot. You know what's happening at running back. Uh, I feel pretty good about our pass rush. Elon could move back inside, but I like him on the outside. Pierce is going to be an occasional guy. Deacons, Wallace. Okay. I mean, things look pretty good. This could be the year. Just need to con uh, continue to develop these guys. Just the continued development is going to be the difference between, you know, making the playoffs and missing the playoffs, really. And at the midseason mark, we are 5-2, and two, second in the AFC East behind the 6-1 and one Jets. But we're doing much better. And as you're going to see here, our salary cap space is $146 million for 2027 as we no longer have to pay Tyreek Hill a salary cap hit of $70 million a year. We're going to extend him immediately. And we're also going to be able to extend Tua Tungavailoa on a long-term contract as well. Now, it's very expensive. It's very expensive. But to get your superstar X-Factor franchise quarterback back, it is worth it. And the rest of the free agents, not really anything crazy. Really not. Ron Armstead, that's a maybe for me. That might just be we let him walk. Austin Jackson could bring back in that case. Amagaji could slide in and be a downgrade. But still a starter on the O-line. Dealer, Cam Smith, Devon A-Chan. A-Chan we're going to bring back now. He doesn't want to be here. I don't care. I'll pay you more money to like Miami more. And still doesn't sign. You realize you play running back, right? Just accept it's a lot of money. We have depth at corner, but Cam Smith is really, really cheap and is good. So it makes sense to kind of keep him around. 16.7 million on a one-year deal for Sealer. What are we talking about? No. I can't do that. That's an insane ask. Maybe 8 million? Maybe 10? Close to 17. No way. Beat the Steelers in week 8. 6 and 2. The Jets are 7 and 1. And we could give them their second loss here. And this would be really important for the division if we can just manage to beat the Jets at home in week 9. They're an 82 overall. We're up to an 87 overall. We have awesome skill players, and we win 31-27. Huge victory, and we take the AFC East division lead, 7-2. And, and we would finish at 12-5. We had two losses in a row, Week 16 and Week 17, but a big win over the Bills gave us that 12-5 record for sole lead in the AFC East. However, we squandered a first round bye. We were 10-2 at one point, and then obviously went downhill a little, a little bit. Tua Tungavailoa, huge year. 35 touchdowns and just six picks. Over 4,000 yards passing. Rushing, HN was over four yards per carry, but not significantly. He's just barely into that 90-plus threshold. Still quite a good season, no question. Tyreek Hill dominated. Jalen Waddle was great. Nick Harbour had a great year. The rookie Darius Moore out of Mizzou was also quite solid. As expected, he has star dev. And then defensively, Denard Meekins and Trevin Wallace both had over 100 tackles. Meekins had one more, but Wallace had more solo tackles. 13 TFLs for Chase Young led the way. 
did have one double digit sacker that was Zach Sealer with 10 and a half, but I'm not really worried about the sack numbers as long as our defense is playing really well. And six interceptions for Deion Hewitt is going to earn him a dev trade upgrade, almost certainly. What a rookie year for Deion Hewitt. It may be defensive rookie of the year, but it also may be in the top of the NFL for interceptions total. So he might end up being in position for defense or for defensive back of the year. Six interceptions led the entire league as a rookie. That's got to be worth something. If he doesn't go up to star dev, that'll be completely ridiculous. But we are back in the playoffs. Who's going to retire? Got to be Teron Armstead, right? I'd be shocked if it were anybody else. Got to be Armstead. Yeah, it is. Okay. So we're going to get a morale boost. We got to make it through the playoffs here. And we'll see if we can beat the Titans in the wild card. Not jumping in in the wild card. Maybe I'll consider it in the divisional if we make it. And we did. And we also have a breakout linebacker challenge. Trevin Wallace could go up to star dev. That would be nice. And it probably won't take much. A tackle for loss or two. That's it. Just one TFL. A sack. A pick. A forced fumble. Any of that get the boost or holding the Jags to less than 250 total, uh, total yards which is quite doable I would say one last hurrah of course still for Teron Armstead we are going to jump in here in the divisional and see if we can knock off the in-state rival Jacksonville Jaguars obviously they play in a different division same conference though but I would still call them an in-state rival just because how many teams play in the same state as one another right you have the Rams, Chargers, and 49ers in California. You have the Texans and the Cowboys in Texas. You have the Dolphins, Jags, and Bucks in Florida. The Bengals and Browns in Cle uh, not Cleveland in Ohio. And then I think the last one is just the Giants, the Jets in New Jersey. Are there any others I'm missing out on? I guess... Maybe you could say that, I mean, the, the Commanders and the Ravens do not play in the same state. No, they do. They do. They do. Because the, the Landover, Maryland is where the Commanders play. So that's the last one. Baltimore, Maryland, and Landover, Maryland. I don't think I'm forgetting anything else. You know, I'm sure you guys will tell me if I do. I have complete faith in that. As we are currently down 10-7 at the hands of the Jaguars. 17-7 now as we get into the third quarter. Touchdown game, and we cannot find the end zone. Second and five. Five and a half minutes to play. This could be really fun to get Tyreek Hill the football and on the move. I wonder what playing with 99 speed is like. Seems like I won't know because Tyreek Hill is swallowed up for a loss of three. <laughs> Josh Allen reads it the entire way. That's tough. I mean, we got to deal with Josh Allen playing in the AFC East on the Bills. Now we got to deal with this one in the AFC South. On the uh, Jaguars. A little check down to A-Chan. Okay, it'll be fourth and one. Obviously going to go for it in this spot. We just run the ball again. Fourth and one, give me a block. All right, A-Chan's got the speed to make it happen. We could take this really slow and have this be the last possession of the game. But I don't think that's going to be possible anymore. Nick Harbour finds the end zone. Nicholas Harbour is just way too fast. 10-2. 100 meter speed is unbelievable now I'm not sure if it's going to be that if he holds 240 pounds that was also you know going into college I was a, as a high schooler I'm pretty sure that's just absolutely ridiculous Nicholas Harbour touchdown we're gonna to make it a tie game and our defense needs to come up strong I'd love a TFL for Trevin Wallace that would be sweet how do the Jags want to play this potential final drive Will they knock us out of the playoffs? Will we win the Battle of Florida? Oh, it's looking bad. What are you doing, Anderson? It's not a great start. They take on the center, so Trevin Wallace can come in. Nope, not going to happen. It's intercepted by Meekins. Easy reads. Whatever Dr. Seuss book you can think of. Easy reads for Meekins. Oh, that's a big time for a turnover. Read that beautifully. Unfortunately, not Trevin Wallace in that spot. Hopefully is a TFL. We should make this the final drive of the game if we were smart. But I'm not sure we're going to do that. Step up with Tua. He's so mobile. Oh, look at that. Look at, look at him go.
This is an absolute disaster from the Jaguars. Because this is a touchdown. Moore is going to bring that strong safety over to the sideline. Harbour's going to streak right up the seam. And if they cover him at all, it's Tyreek Hill. How does that happen? Genuinely no idea how that happened. Somebody's going to get open here. Well, that was not the correct throw. What am I doing? Do I just want to bring the defense back out there? Nah. Fourth and four. We're going for it. Same play. Not a great decision, probably. A little bit too bold. And it's intercepted. Oh. Oh, Tua. That was Tua's fault. Ugh. Oh, Tua, man. If he had better arm strength. Oh, what a, what a bad decision. This creates a lot of suspense, though. That's because I've been, I'm a professional, right? I've been doing this for a while. I know how to build suspense. That was going to be anti climax If we just went down the field, nobody would have cared about the final error. Would have been anticlimactic, as I, as I started to say. Now, now we have a chance to go on a game-winning drive, get the two-point conversion, win the game. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm a professional. And I want to make it a little bit more difficult on myself. Or, you know what? Even more than a game-winning drive, what about overtime? Oh, everyone loves overtime. That's super fun. Let's just play for overtime. I'm just going to force the ball to Nick Harbour every time? Yeah, probably. Somebody will be wide open on this play. I need the O-line to give me time. That's pretty tight coverage on Harbour. That's got to be defensive pass interference. I need a call. But you know what builds suspense? Fourth down, got to have it, game on the line. That's what gets the people going. All right, here we go. I mean, we really absolutely need this. Get it to A-Chan. The arm of Tua! Touchdown! Devon A-Chan. Wheel route out of the backfield, of course. And electric speed down the sideline. It's Tua time. Here in Miami. It got dicey, but I told you, you know, we were just setting up something magical. And you know what? We're playing for overtime. Gonna kneel it. Gonna march on kneeling it. He's not even on the field. Uh, they're actually not gonna kneel it. Trevin Wallace with the tackle. I'm gonna call timeouts. I want more tackling opportunities with Trevin Wallace. Where is he? Run the ball. All right, the Jags actually think they can get this now. I should have uh, not been stupid. Keep him in bounds, please. Okay. Uh, they're going to get a game-winning field goal here, probably. I need to figure out ways to avoid that. An interception with Trevin Wallace. Star Dev is not worth it this much. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't call a timeout. They're out of field goal range. Okay. We can't, we can't lose. I, I don't know how you think this is possibly field goal range. This is from the logo. This is from midfield. <laughs> Simply not going to go in. Oh, it went in so easily. What? How? He drilled it from 60 like it was nothing. Okay, here's the play call. Don't cover Devon Achan, please. If you don't cover Achan, we can win, we lose. Fuck. Well, who doesn't love a redemption arc? One more year, let's get it. Man, I'm so good. I'm so, no, this is all calculated. Next year's Super Bowl, oh, it's, the payoff's going to hit like crack. It's going to be beautiful. Did we get Trevin Wallace star dev? Let's go. He's like, yeah, dude. Hey, coach, I know we lost in the playoffs and our season's over, but hey, I feel like I made some progress. I'm tempted to cut him. Not a team player. Lights too bright. Doesn't want it enough. Got a lot of bad thoughts right now. The Jags made the Super Bowl. I'm not really worried about all that, to be honest. I just got to focus on playing my game. Cowboys beat the Jags by one. What an electric Super Bowl. 32-31. Awful result. But Deion Hewitt wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. That's that's maybe Superstar Dev. That might be an upgrade straight from normal to Superstar. Making things very interesting. Teron Armstead probably just retired. 
or Will. Nicholas Harbour's up to Superstar Dev, if he didn't already have it. More we knew was at Star. And then defensively, Hewitt is up to Superstar with upgrades. Chase Young is up to Superstar X Factor. Okay, things are looking really good. It's definitely worth it to play another season. 55 million in available salary cap. Devon A. Chan. Fifth year option on Jackson Powers Johnson. We'll just accept that. Sealer, I think we let walk. Connor Williams is, is good right now. Is he worth that? We don't really have a replacement, so I'm going to say to us, yes. And then A. Chan, of course. I mean, he's, he's in his prime. Just need him to resign. I'll overpay him. He's going to have a huge year. It's going to be worth it. And then Austin Jackson just needs to stick around at this point because we don't have any tackle depth. If Saran Armstead leaves and Austin Jackson leaves as well, we would just have Kieran Amagaji. Armstead did not straight up retire. He's just here. Well, we're going to let him go. Maybe get a new kicker punter and a defensive end with our remaining money. We have money now. Money's no problem. The Jarius Sneed is here. How about a defensive end? I'll take a defensive tackle. Aleem McNeil. Yes, that works. A little expensive, actually. A little expensive for me. Where are we in that offer with that? In his offers, I should say. Where are we? First, but a lot of competition. We're going to pivot. In terms of value, I would say DJ Reader actually might be the best thing we can get here. $13 million per year. No offers. Wants to be here. I think we can lowball him and, and still get him to sign pretty comfortably. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a really good offer for us. And that actually en enables us to upgrade our special team as well, which I think could be fairly important. So we'll go off uh, after Brandon Aubrey. Not paying him that, though. And then Hunter. And then that should be pretty much all of our uh, salary cap. But I think worth it. I really do. Corey Bohorquez, that's a good cheap punter to bring in. Yeah, this is going to be good. And we actually signed all three of them. Week one. Very weird. I feel like I feel like they made an update to this. That never happens with the kickers and punters. And also, the prices feel different on some of these top free agents. Like, it's priced in advance, ranking each position group instead of actually how good the player is. So, I don't know. It seems kind of insane that Zach Steeler would be 15 mil. And that, you know, DJ Reader even would be as expensive as he was at 13, 14 mil. It seems a little bit crazy to me. But, you know, kind of had to go out and do it. And does Hutmacher make the move to defensive end? He's 330 pounds. I'm going to say no. DJ Reader is also a pretty big dude. But fits the, fits the scheme. Power moves 80. Keep in mind, in a 3-4, you know, that defensive end is often more like a defensive tackle. Think about, oh, I don't know, like a Draymond Jones type of a player. I guess he's like kind of what I picture to be a typical 3-4 end. I mean, I'm, not that he's the best one. I would say maybe... Um, Cam Hayward of the Steelers is a great example. Justin Matabike, I would say. Aaron Donald has been, obviously. So, this this team, looking good. Ooh, is this going to be a generational power back? Larry Lewis? That's like a 1980s bruiser running back name. And he went to Oklahoma. Not that I'm a big OU guy, of course. Horns up. But, that's like, they've had a lot of good running backs. A lot of good running backs over the years. Adrian Peterson, of course, one of them. Oh, he's behind me now. I changed it. But uh, not really going to focus on running back here. What do we need in the draft? There's another running back. Max Battle, another big-time name. Awesome-looking tight end. Is this clash just going to be amazing? Also, Zeke Duvall. Got to keep him away from the Jags. He looks like he could be very good. This might be a trade-up draft. Harry Levine also looks great. Okay, I don't know what we're going to do. In the draft, we pick at number 26 overall. Do we make a move up? It looks like a stacked class, especially at receiver. Oscar Kirkpatrick from Clemson looks amazing. 6'6", 280. I mean, this would be the player to get. 
Top fit is Miami. B block should be finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Physically, he's unbelievable. This is where I start to think about a trade up. But is he going to be available? Almost certainly not. I think the middle linebacker we have a better chance to get. We would still have to trade up, and I'm okay trading up. Realistic rebuild doesn't mean no trading, but I'm not going to go a super long ways, and Oscar Kirkpatrick is the number one overall pick. Yeah, that makes sense. Zeke Duval looks incredible. Looks very, very good. Now, I'm a little bit worried. Not really worried, but slightly worried about only saying good speed, but he ran pretty well. That's probably going to be mid to high 80s at worst. I, I think we should trade up. All right, this is going to be the offer we send to the Commanders. It is a first this year and next year and a third this year to move up to nine. It's going to be worth it for us. I don't want to take a chance. This linebacker looks very, very good. I don't really see too many really good-looking inside linebackers. To me, it is worth the trade up. And also, Georgia, they've been producing studs lately. If we can get our own Roquan Smith... And very different build here, 245 pounds. But if we can get our own Roquan Smith type player, I am all the way in. Linebacker could be a need for us, of course. I'm looking to upgrade. Zeke Duval ends up being the upgrade. Hidden Dev, 87 speed, 90 acceleration. We need him to be the guy. How about a defensive tackle here? Trevor Spencer from Washington could potentially compete to be a starter. 478 speed at defensive tackle. 298 pounds, but that's still a crazy fast time. Hidden Dev, 88 strength, 79 speed. Trevor Spencer could compete to start right away at 3-4 defensive end. I know we signed DJ Reader, but I mean, maybe Spencer gets in there over Marshawn Nealand. That's a real potential. Get a power back in the mix with our last pick we're going to take. Devin Barto, not to be confused with Kevin Barlow. <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my head. Remember Kevin Barlow? He was a player. Kevin Barlow played from 2001 to 2006, most of which with the 49ers had one season of 1,000 yards rushing. And that name just popped into my head. Also, I think we just found a generational linebacker. Zeke Duval is an 80 overall with 87 tackle out of the draft. Good block shedding, great pursuit. Hit power is fine. Coverage is already really good. He's got every trait you could look for. Zeke Duval is a heck of a player. Trevor Spencer's not even bad. 74 overall. We're going to move him to defensive end. That might change slightly. 83 power moves already. It's really just block shedding and awareness that are low. But that overall might even jump up at defensive end because the power moves are so high. Trevor Spencer. Very impressive stuff to start. It was up to a 75 overall. The rest of the draft wasn't anything to write home about, but I didn't take most of those picks besides the running back. Oscar Kirkpatrick ends up being a 79. Look at this, though. 280 overall quarterbacks. What was this draft class? Byron Bozeman from North Dakota State. I think Bozeman's Montana and not North Dakota, but that, that'd be a fun last name combo. Yeah, Bozeman is in Montana. But 380 overalls in this class and multiple 79s. Oscar Kirkpatrick looked insane, though. 6'6", 280. 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 79 power moves, 88 strength. This seems like the Miles Garrett clone. Am I wrong here? This seems like the Miles Garrett build coming out of Texas A&M. He's going to be an X Factor. I can feel it. That build's just too crazy. Only superstar. But and I'm not just saying that cuz of Browns, right? But let's let's compare him. Miles Garrett 6'4 272, a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter, 87 speed compared to 86 speed. And obviously with the power moves, I mean, you're not going to start with, you know, 99 power moves as a rookie. But he's a little bit bigger than Miles Garrett, which sounds insane, but similarly athletic. This guy's a freak. But we're actually going to set it up like this. DJ Reader is going to be D-tackle number two. Neeland and Spencer will be my starters. I just think that Spencer fits the 3-4 DN mold a little bit better than 335-pound DJ Reader. And we can still set up the specialists any way we want to. In fact, Spencer's probably going to be a pass rusher. 83 power moves right away. Kind of have to. Marshawn Nealon can still be a rush end. Duval, of course, is starting. He's a freak. And then I'll probably still put Jalen Waddle in the slot. But this is a pretty good group. feel really good about it. This needs to be the Super Bowl team, and I think it will be. 
pretty excited with the way the team looks. Obviously, Kieran Amagaji is a bit of a downgrade from Teron Armstead right now. Only 74 overall, but we're going to have to make do. He's not the blindside protector anyway. We have, of course, Austin Jackson for that. A little bit better, I guess. Zeke Duval up to a, an 81 overall. Unfortunately, because he came out as an 80, we don't know if he has Superstar or Superstar X Factor from the upgrade. Usually, you can get him up to an 80, and boom, it'll pop up. We'll get him up to a 75. It's in those tiers of five, so we're going to have to wait. doesn't change anything. He's starting as it is. He's going to be very, very good. You just don't see 80 overall middle linebackers in the auto-generated draft classes. It doesn't happen. Well, I mean, clearly sometimes it does, but it's an incredibly, incredibly good middle linebacker to get, and we are going to reward him with being the starting Mike. Now, we are 3-4 defense. We got two inside linebackers. That's fine, but uh, he's going to be numero uno. This is our Super Bowl year. It's going to happen. I'd love two X-Factors. How sweet would that be? But Mocker gets a start. I'm going to move Spencer up, as I said. Rush D tackle works better for him. Ball, Wallace, Anderson's fine. Want to move Waddle back. Get success with Waddle in the slot. And then we're going to simulate. I think this is a playoff team. I'm all but certain of that. Just can we be a Super Bowl team? That's the goal of any of these rebuilds. And that's what we have to make happen. Four and three at the midseason mark. It's right there to win the AFC East. It's very tight right now. Uh, we're going to have to go on quite a run here, but let's go ahead and see. I mean, it's very doable. Obviously, we are within half a game of the division lead. See the dev traits, nothing on offense. And then defensively, that does not surprise me. I mean, 80 overall as a rookie, middle linebacker, and even just anybody, but a middle linebacker especially is super rare to get any, anywhere close. 90 awareness already, superstar X factor. I mean, you could tell almost instantly. I had to move up for this guy. Looked incredible. And I think already seems worth it. Not sure on Spencer just yet. Hopefully it's quite good, but doesn't really change much at this point in the rebuild. Unless it's X-Factor and we get X-Factor abilities for a playoff run. But I think we're very capable of making the playoffs here. Let's get it done. And we missed the playoffs. Uh, standings are broken, but oh, we actually have a first round bye. 13 and 4. We have the top record in the AFC. What a change. What a change of emotions there. Standings was glitched for a minute, but don't worry about it because we are in to the playoffs. 3,700 yards for two of 32 touchdowns to just three picks. A chance up to 4.6 yards per carry, 10 touchdowns, 1,400 yards rushing. Tyreek Hill and Waddle both go over 1,000 yards. Waddle, 13 TDs. And then defensively, Nice year for Zeke Duval. 113 TFLs, four for loss, one and a half sacks, and a pick. 11 sacks for the rookie Trevor Spencer, 10 for Nealand. Show me X Factor. I'll take Superstar. I'll take Superstar, and then probably Defensive Rookie of the Year. Won't really matter too much at this point. I guess he might get X Factor. Now nah, he won't, because you get a Superstar upgrade for Defensive Rookie of the Year or Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, Edge Rusher is not really doing much in terms of of getting sacks. I guess Marshawn Nealon came off the edge, but not much for Chase Young at right outside linebacker, even as a rush end. A little bit weird, but our defense played well enough, obviously, because we made the playoffs first round by number five defense in points per game, number eight offense. So I thought missing the playoffs was more likely than a first round by, but we got a first round by. So I'll take that. Three wins and we're Super Bowl champs. That's all it takes. Zeke Duval is playing up to an 87 overall as a rookie. True 86 overall, so it's really not even that far behind. And a pick artist. That'd be pretty good. Oop, Trevor Spencer's dev trait probably revealed, and it's superstar. I already know that. It happened. I don't know how I just forgot about that in the same second. It is late. It is 3.08 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I've been grinding it. We're getting after it, that's for sure. It's the Jags again, by the way, in the playoffs. I'm jumping in. No mistakes this time. I mean, no no throwing for content. No no making it exciting. Just get the win. That's definitely what I was doing. I don't make mistakes. I make content. What a great way to put it. Better start. 21-0. It's over. 
No comeback this time for Trevor Lawrence. It's over. No, it's over. 31-10. 38-10. GG, thanks for playing. Get back to Jacksonville. What a monster game. To a dominant 170 yards passing. This guy's a freak. Chiefs in the AFC Championship. Patrick Mahomes versus Tyreek Hill. What a fun way to paint that picture. Paint that matchup. This is a win. Chiefs don't have it. Their time's done. It's two is time. Who's going to score first? 7 nothing Miami, second quarter. Chiefs answer pretty quickly. But our offense can't be stopped right now. 14-14. Chiefs actually take the lead. That's not very good. 21-17. We re-grab it. Extend it. 28-17. Please! Chiefs go down! But they went down swinging. 28-23 is your final. I tried to end the simulation right as the game ended, and it glitched. All right. Our win is registered. We're moving on to the Super Bowl. That was easy. Trevor Spencer did win Defensive Rookie of the Year, but as predicted, he's already a superstar, so he's not going to get a superstar upgrade. But he is very, very good as a rookie. The 80 overall is not indicative of how good he is as a player. And fittingly enough, it is another battle for Florida. Bucks versus Dolphins. Could be a fun one. Looking for dev trade upgrades. Duval, we knew. Javon Holland up to Superstar X Factor. This is a really good team. It, yeah, it, it is different when you build it this way. We obviously, you know, uh, did some things that are going to be unrealistic. Maybe you think the franchise tag, whatever. But, you know, we let some players go. We were limited in free agency, still made some signings, still made, uh, still made some trades. And... You know what? I, I, I'm really happy with the final product. Let's get that big time result though. Dolphins over the Bucks. 30. 30? Yep. 30 to 17. No points so far. Going to be tough to get those 30. But a lot of game left. The Bucks are kept off the board. Drake Greenlaw down. Bucks now. 10 0. Not a very exciting game so far, but a, a score I'm comfortable with. 13 to 7. And that's your final. It's a 13 to seven old school Super Bowl score. Unreal. What a weird game. And are we at Raymond James? It certainly looks like it. Yeah, we are at Raymond James Field. So the Bucks get super home field advantage playing a game in their home stadium and they lose in it. Gotta love it. Their lightning can't strike twice for the Bucks. That is the Super Bowl. Dolphins on top. Realistic rebuild built around the talent that was here. Had to let a lot of talent go. Wilkins, AVG, Teron Armstead retired over time. Xavier Howard gone. Jalen Phillips we had to let walk. Are you kidding me? Tough. But to a hoist the Lombardi, and we're going home happy. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Helps me out a ton, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.